Hello and welcome to this video designed to raise your business financial awareness. This is a second session in our series of financial awareness videos for business owners and managers. You might still be thinking, so why should I bother? Surely the accountant or bookkeeper takes care of all of this stuff. Well, wrong. Your accountant or bookkeeper will keep accurate records of the finances of your business and ensure they are recorded with the company's house or HMRC etc. However, you need financial information in order to make sound business decisions and you need to be making these decisions throughout the year, not just at year end. To do this, you need to have regular, accurate financial data throughout the year, be able to read and interpret financial reports and data, and understand what they are telling you about your business. In this session, we're aiming to show what financial information you need to know. It's important to recognize that good awareness of some key financial information can stop your business running into difficulty in future. Also, you'll have an improved awareness of how your actions today can improve your business efficiency. That will ultimately lead to your business success and the ability to deliver on your business plans. We define financial information as anything that is associated with understanding and managing the different categories that make up your financial statements. We'll provide specific advice on how to manage the key elements of your business, namely profitability, profit and loss account and balance sheet, working capital, so cash, stock, debtor and creditor balances that you hold in order for your business to actively trade and other elements for annual review. We want to give you confidence that you know the things that you should be managing on a regular basis throughout the year. Depending on the nature and health of your business, you need to be clear on which areas you need to be managing on a daily, weekly, monthly or seasonal basis. This will be different for all businesses. This can be particularly important when you are looking for further investment, as the message that your financial statements give to the viewer will impact your credit ratings and their investment decisions. Again, it's good to have an awareness of these things throughout the year to ensure that you're ready to make the right decisions in time for your year-end accounts. The minimum statutory requirements that you need to understand and manage will be slightly different depending on whether you are the business director or a key commercial manager within the business. The business directors will have certain statutory obligations associated with financial statements that need to be met, including reporting of corporation tax owed, VAT, PAYE and national insurance re employee salaries, and pension contributions for employees. The associated payment of these costs is mandatory and must be carefully managed. These cash flows out of the business must be built into forecasts including statutory increases, for example, minimum wage levels or national insurance contribution changes to ensure that they are managed alongside other business objectives. We build more on this in the complimentary session on statutory accounts. Before we consider the financial information that we need to know, let's first have a quick overview of the two key accounting statements. Understand what they actually show you and why good awareness of this is important. Your profit and loss account records your net profit associated with your trading activity over a specific period of time. It shows whether you made a profit or a loss from that period. This is simply down to whether your income from sales activity was higher than your costs incurred, therefore a profit, or lower than your costs incurred, therefore a loss. Profit and loss account will often be considered when you review trading performance on either a weekly or monthly basis and your statutory accounts will show the net trading profit or loss for your statutory annual reporting period. Income is recorded at the point of sale or when you invoice the sale. So the income will only be included in a particular reporting period if the sales invoice is dated within that period. This is irrespective of whether your customer has paid you or not. Some of the costs incurred in that period will be directly associated with the sales activity. For example, raw materials purchased and used, or production line wage costs. Other cost elements will be overheads incurred, irrespective of the level of trading activity. For example, costs like electricity, business rates, administration staff costs, etc. Also, 
any dividends that you take out of the business will impact on the retained profit left in the business. Your accounting system or accountant will manage when costs incurred are recognised in your profit and loss account. They will aim to match income and associated costs in the same period. By adjusting the costs incurred, using accounting methods such as accruals and prepayments. These accounting adjustments are required to give an accurate view of profitability in the period being reviewed. For example, many general costs incurred are overheads, e.g. insurance. They will be incurred once a year, so if you're trying to understand monthly profitability, your accountant or accounting system should spread that annual cost over each reporting period that you look at so that each month correctly includes a fair 1 12th share of the annual cost. Relevant cost adjustments like these are required to get an accurate view of profitability for each given month. An understanding of the types of costs within your profit and loss account will be important in helping you to understand how much trading activity is required both to make a positive margin on your trading activity and also what is required to cover the appropriate share of your overhead costs. One of the most common issues in understanding accurate profitability levels within smaller businesses relates to the timely monitoring and recording of stock balances. It's important that your stock balances recorded in your accounting system are correct at the end of each period being reviewed, especially if your stock levels are variable. Incorrect stock measurement for any given reporting period can have a significant impact on the costs you recognise in that period, and hence will skew your understanding of your profitability. The balance sheet account records the book net worth of your company at any point in time, giving a snapshot of the value of your company. We acknowledge that this is definitely just the book value of your company, and true value may not always be reflected accurately here. At any point in time, the different categories on a balance sheet show how the value in your company is held, and these are split into separate groupings depending on how easily those assets or liabilities can be changed to cash long-term assets, including buildings or equipment, are often called fixed assets. They can't necessarily be turned into cash quickly. Short-term assets include items like cash, trade debtors, i.e. those amounts owed to you by customers, stock of raw materials or finished goods. Long-term liabilities are items like bank loans or lease arrangements. And short-term liabilities include trade creditors, i.e. those amounts owed to suppliers. Your total assets minus your total liabilities gives you a net asset value for the company, which is the book accounting or shareholder value of the company at any point in time. The balance sheet value of your company will increase over time if your profit and loss account for that time period has been showing that you are making net profits rather than net losses. Although do note that dividends taken out of your business will reduce your retained profit, so it may stop your balance sheet from growing over time. To comply with UK law, all limited company directors must review the financial performance and condition of their business at least annually, and must submit annual financial statements to Companies House. Sole traders or partnerships submit documents to HMRC for tax purposes. However, we believe it would be irresponsible and maybe dangerous not to review the finances far more regularly. The detail of what financial aspects you need to review will vary from business to business, but common amongst most businesses is the need to monitor the following. Profitability. This is fundamental. We suggest reviewing the profitability of your business at least monthly. The report can review profitability for the month and compare to a set budget or target and also compare this against the same month in the previous year, as well as looking at the year-to-date profit. Cash flow. The bank position always have cash available to meet payments as they fall due. We suggest you monitor this at least weekly. Stock. This is raw materials, working progress and finished goods. Of course you don't want to run out or conversely have too much. Monitor this regularly and ideally check your stock levels monthly. Debtors. Now these won't be applicable if you are an e-commerce business, but as a minimum, review these weekly. Creditors. Take as much time as possible 
but be sure not to breach agreements. Again, review these weekly as a minimum. Let's now look at managing profitability. Essentially, in terms of financial information, this involves a close look at the profit and loss account of your business on a regular basis, identifying any concerning patterns or trends, for example, costs escalating, sales falling, or margins being eroded. Drilling down deeper to see profitability by product line, by customer, and or by division or channel. And then making changes accordingly. From this discipline, it's possible to identify potential problems before they get out of hand, and make changes to stop them impacting on the annual performance of the business. When considering profitability, a key requirement is to consider your business cycle, and particularly seasonality. You cannot make a judgment on business profitability if it doesn't include, and average out, the impacts of different parts of your business cycle. For example, one business might not be able to sensibly consider one week's profitability if it has a business cycle that is always quiet at the start of the month and busy at the end of the month. Instead, they'll need to consider monthly profitability, which averages out the impacts of high and low activity weeks. Similarly, if a business is busy in the winter and quiet in the summer, overall profitability needs to be considered on an annualized basis to get an average level incorporating the varied activity levels. Of key importance is that your overheads need to be covered across the full annual cycle that they are incurred. And if that means that you make a loss in your quiet season, it's important to ensure that you are making enough of a profit in your busy season to cover this loss. It's also very useful to compare profitability to the same period the previous year and the ones before that to ensure there are no adverse trends. If there are, you need to be able to identify exactly what's causing them. A review of certain parts of the balance sheet is also needed, particularly debtors to identify any potential bad debt which can seriously impact profitability. I'll signpost you here to session three, management information, for a deeper look at this area. Let's now consider managing your working capital. Working capital is the capital of a business which is used in its day-to-day -day training operations. Successful businesses need to generate profits. However, they must also have positive cash flow in order to remain operational. So let's look at how to make the best use of your working capital. Firstly, looking at cash and the cash cycle, with particular focus on how you avoid running out of cash. Cash is vital for any company to survive and to grow. The availability of cash in your business gives you the ability to trade and to run your business. Every business needs an initial investment of cash to set up the company. For example, buying equipment required, but then you also need to be able to fund working capital to trade. This just describes the basic upfront funding that is required to cover making your products before you actually get paid for the sales that you make. In many industries, you might invoice a customer when you sell your product, and possibly they have 30 days terms before they need to pay you. So on every sale where you don't receive cash, you have a debtor who owes you cash. Unfortunately, you will have already made the product with the cost of the raw materials and the factory time to do the making, and delivered it to the customer. So you will have incurred costs in making your product. Hence, there is a cash gap. You need to fund this gap, and this funding, i.e. a cash injection, is needed. And this is your working capital requirement. Cash flows through a business, and is often described as the lifeblood of the business. To best manage the cash in your business, you need to focus on the four key elements of the cash flow cycle. These are cash, both in hand and in the bank, stock, debtors, and creditors. It's essential to manage the level of cash that you need to run your business, and cash forecasting is key. This needs to be managed in conjunction with the right level of stock, minimizing your debtors, so money owed to the business, and also maximizing your creditors, amounts that the business owes to suppliers. For every business relationship, there are many factors to consider that impact on the right level of indebtedness in either direction. And managing stock 
it's important to remember that stock can include raw materials and packaging, work in progress, as well as finished goods. To run out of stock of either raw materials, finished goods or packaging is not a good place to be. However, having too much of any stock type is also not good financial management, especially in food and drink, where shelf lives can be short. Always consider stock on your shelves as stacks of banknotes that you can't actually use. In order to stay in control of stock levels and ensure that A, you don't run out, and B, you don't have too much, there are processes that you can implement, including regular stock checks. The most common failure in producing meaningful accounts is the failure to measure stock accurately and regularly. Forecasting tools and models to anticipate future sales and manage procurement and purchasing accordingly and negotiating lead times with suppliers. Finally, drawdown arrangements with suppliers. Let's now focus on managing debtors. Debtors are customers who owe money to your business. Credit control is fundamental in business. Whilst you may not have a specialized credit controller in your business, there are plenty of tools available to help you manage this situation and try to avoid or minimize potential bad debts. These include, Establish the overall credit terms that your business is willing or able to afford. Don't agree something that you can't actually manage to allow. Agree in writing appropriate levels of credit for specific customers based on business credit scores or assessment tools. Review these regularly and be prepared to reduce or cancel credit lines if adverse information is received, unless the customer can provide substantive evidence to the contrary. Know how profitable each customer is to your business. Consider the sales channels that you are utilizing, recognizing that increasing your proportion of e-commerce sales, where customers generally pay up front, will contribute to reducing outstanding debtor levels. Review weekly an aged debtors list. This enables you to stay on top of and manage the credit taken, to help avoid breaches. Also, put customers on stop where credit is exceeded. Provide prompt reminders if any debt becomes overdue via email, phone, or text. Appoint specialist debt collectors or solicitors promptly if you don't receive any positive evidence of imminent payment. Finally, consider credit insurance protection. We'll now explore managing creditors. Creditors refers to monies owed by your business to suppliers and other short-term debts. Credit provided to your business by suppliers is potentially the cheapest form of credit available. However, this is not to be abused, or there can be serious consequences. Some hints and tips to manage these situations include Maintain strong, regular communication with suppliers. Build relationships and trust. Open book arrangements are a good way of getting transparency on price movements from suppliers. This, in turn, can often help you to justify your own sales price increases to your customers, hence enabling you to pass supplier cost increases onto your customers and maintain your profit margin. Wherever possible, always settle invoices on time. If not, communicate with the supplier and request a formal extension, or at least make part payment. Don't bury your head. Negotiate terms of credit at least annually and always ask for improved terms particularly if you are buying increased volumes of stock. If you don't ask, and if you are short of cash flow or working capital, there are financial facilities specifically designed to assist businesses in these situations, such as overdrafts, trade loans, or invoice finance. We recommend that you speak with your bank or reputable lender about these possibilities well in advance of anticipating such needs. Now we'll look at some of the financial considerations it would make sense to discuss with your accountant or financial director on at least an annual basis prior to finalizing the annual accounts. However, it's also good to have an awareness of these areas as you go through the year, so that you have a chance to manage situations in the run-up to finalizing your annual accounts. One thing to consider is your business aims and priorities. As a business, are you looking to attract investors or banks to provide additional funding to allow for investment and growth? If so, then you need to demonstrate a positive trajectory in your annual accounts to 
show things like your underlying business activity is profitable, perhaps looking at gross margin, or that you are personally invested in your business. Financial statements need to be consistent with your understanding of where your business is positioned compared with business plan objectives. In the run-up to the year end, there are several levers that you have as a business owner that will demonstrate your investment in the company and give signals to stakeholders who look at the accounts. Let's look at these now. Firstly, profitability and how much is retained within the business. Depending on who you expect to be reading your final year end accounts, there is a balance to be struck on whether to retain profits in the business to show greater balance sheet strength and financial stability or to satisfy shareholders by paying dividends. If you are planning to grow or scale up, profits will need to be retained to spend on anticipated new equipment, people, marketing, training, and so on. Based on your personal investment in the company, through both time and finance that has been invested, what return are you looking for from the company? Dividends can be taken out of the company, but how much value can your business stand to have removed and still show a positive trajectory with both positive net results made and growth of your balance sheet net assets over time? It's important to consider both your business and personal objectives. If there's strong, profitable performance and sufficient cash available in the business, this is the time to consider tax implications, dividend policy and potential bonus payments. It's also a good time to review profitability in the wider sense and ask questions like, could we be doing this differently and potentially be more profitable? What if we were to have a third party to do our manufacturing or packaging for us? What would that look like in our profit and loss account? And consider running some worked examples to project what the financial implications would look like. Secondly, stock levels. Too much stock at the year end gives a negative signal in your financial statements. Stakeholders looking at your accounts will consider your level of stock relative to the amount that you sell. The right level of stock will vary for different businesses. But they will look at your stock carrying value in your balance sheet and make a judgment on whether your stock value representing three months worth of your sales turnover activity is appropriate or not. One reason for carrying too much stock may be that you cannot sell your goods. Is there a risk of shelf life issues and needing to write off stock? This again would have a negative impact on your profit position. At the year end, bad debt provisions need to be considered for customers that you think may not pay their debts. Awareness of your potential non-payers needs to be managed in the run up to the year end with extra effort on resolving issues or queries to minimize the impact. Putting a bad debt provision in your accounts reverses the positive impact of the sale and recognizes the loss of that income in your profit and loss account. Director's loans show that you invested in your business, which is a positive. However, being in the format of debt automatically leads to the question of when must it be paid back and the money be taken out of the business. Also, as a liability for the business, this debt makes the balance sheet look weaker. One option to consider to improve the strength of your balance sheet is to convert your director's loans to share capital, i.e. change from debt to an equity investment. This reclassifies the amount that the business owes to you personally as the book value of your shareholding, and this has the impact of increasing the business's book value. This may not always be appropriate, but if you are comfortable taking an increased equity share in the company instead of a debt balance with a specific payback date, then this will more positively demonstrate your investment in the company to stakeholders reviewing your accounts. Personal expenses relating to staff in any business can mount up. Businesses must ensure that all relevant expenses have been claimed and processed in the correct period. It's particularly important that all expenses are processed before year-end, so that costs are reflected in the relevant period. Well before you reach the year-end, you should consider the tax implications of retaining profits in the business against reinvesting in the business, for example by purchasing new plant and machinery. If you do have a business requirement for investment of some kind, and you are seeing that your business is generating enough cash to allow you to make that investment, then timing must be considered. To spend that money on capital investment in the current financial period will attract first-year tax allowances that will be received 12 months earlier than if the investment is made in the following financial period. 
investment in fixed assets demonstrates commitment to the associated business plan facilitated by that investment. There are several ways that investment in the business can be made. Where the business is not generating enough cash itself to cover the investment required, and third-party investment or borrowing, i.e. debt, will need to be sought. Depending on the type of investment being sought, you'll need to be aware of the attributes that different potential investors or lenders will be looking for. And then you should ensure that your financial statement tells the story that the relevant investor wants to hear. Well, that's almost the end of this session. Let's pause for a recap of the main areas of business finance you need an awareness of. We looked at statutory obligations, including director's responsibilities, such as those to HMRC, Companies House, and so on. We explored key financial statements, including the profit and loss account and the balance sheet, and importantly, understanding what they are telling you. We recognise the importance of timing and keeping a close eye on financial data, trends, patterns, and acting on this information. We looked at managing profitability, as well as avoiding losses, identifying problems early from data trends, thus giving you time to make changes. We learned about working capital and the four areas you need to manage closely. These were cash, stock, and the importance of balance, debtors and how to minimize these, and creditors and how to maximize the benefit here. Finally, we considered those discussions with accountants at the end of your financial year and the important areas to cover off before finalizing annual accounts. We can now signpost you to other key support in this series. Session three is all about management information. And in those videos, you'll learn what management information you need to make great decisions in your business. After that, session four lifts the lid on how to better control your business through financial modeling. There are also some complimentary sessions specifically to deepen your knowledge from this video. These are statutory accounts, what they are and how to manage them to best advantage, accounting systems and software to help you understand what's out there and to think before you buy. This will really help you to understand what you need a system to do for you. And understanding accounting is where you'll learn the fundamentals of how accountancy works and gain a better awareness of the basic principles of accounting. And finally, the Glossary of Terms session is an essential reference point for explanations of the many finance and accounting terms. But it's goodbye for now.